question. Do banks like black people? It was June 9th of last year when two Aurora officers were called to this Chase Bank on Buckley Road for a trespassing call. I'm the branch manager and you're not welcome here. I says, my money is here. I said, my account is here. She says, well, you're not welcome here and I'm going to call the police. Am I the one she called the police on? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Let's back up. Is it just me or are we starting to see more issues with black people having issues with banks like this? I got a hell of a story for you, but it's not the first time we've been here. According to a lawsuit, 23 year old, Shanquise Jones, a 29 year old Brian Kraft Jr. are suing Comerica Bank after they say branch, the branch in, Ro in Rochester Hills, Michigan, denied them a chance to cash a $1,000 check. In this video, we're gonna go over some recent stories that we've seen with people having issues at banks. Now, I know what you're thinking. Calvin, you're playing the race card. I promise you, I'm not. I'm really trying to find out, is this an increase or are we just starting to see that certain people are more vocal? But here, I'll let you decide. Watch this. A black doctor is suing JP Morgan Chase Bank after refusing to deposit her check worth more than $16,000. Now, the doctor says the bank employees told her they were uncomfortable depositing the check, uh, thinking that she was allegedly committing fraud. Now, BNC's Derek Lewis is live in Sugarland, Texas, with details on what happened and the lawsuit. Derek? Tashani, Dr. Malika Mitchell Stewart never thought that just after finishing medical school that she would be accused of a crime that would have ruined her career. The bank has apologized, but now Dr. Mitchell Stewart is suing for at least $1 million on the basis of discrimination. Her hard work and years of studying had finally paid off. Dr. Malika Mitchell Stewart graduated from the University of Texas's medical school and got a $16,000 bonus check to start working. But everything changed, she says, when she went to open a new account and deposit her bonus check at this Chase Bank in Sugarland, Texas, back in December. Dr. Mitchell Stewart describes how the teller reacted. She looked at the check and then she kind of looked at me and then looked back at the check and just started asking a lot of different questions, just like what I do for a living, how old I was. The questions confused the doctor. She says the employee thought it was a fake check. I'm getting just really anxious, you know, kind of upset, frustrated, just to be questioning the validity of the check. I'm concerned. I'm like, what's going on? Like, I just got this check for my job. Dr. Mitchell Stewart says another employee who she thought was a manager also told her they would not deposit the check. And I was very confused, tried to ask her questions like, why not? And then she really just in the end just kept saying, I just feel uncomfortable. No real valid reason. No, no, no true explanation. That's when she says she left the bank. For them to take my special happy moment away was was so unfortunate and it really was frustrating and disappointing. In a statement to BNC, Chase Bank says we take customer experience very seriously. We have apologized to Dr. Mitchell Stewart. It wasn't really true, true like sympathy or empathy for a person that, you know, you would expect to have like truly like apologetic, like really concerned. Dr. Mitchell Stewart wants money for emotional distress and Chase Bank to be held accountable. We want Dr. Mitchell Stewart to be made whole from uh, experiencing these injuries at the hands of Chase. What she experienced caused great distress and she's still living with that. Um, and we need her to, you know, get everything that she's owed from this lawsuit. The new doctor says she wants justice for everyone. Let it be known that it's not accepted that you know, any person that works for Chase should have any kind of racial biases or treat people how I was treated. The steward says she wants a more sincere apology and that she tells me she chose Chase because she thought it was a reputable bank. Tashani. All right, Derek, uh, to avoid all this, the check could have been deposited with the funds put on hold until the transaction was verified at both banks. Any word on why that didn't happen? Yeah, so that's mentioned actually in the lawsuit. And Dr. Mitchell Stewart tells me that she says that uh, when the actual branch manager apologized after that, the branch manager went on to say that Chase can refuse service to anybody they want without justification. Now, don't get me wrong. Number one, there's a lot of fraud that happens in the United States every day from all ages, all races, all areas. We got that. The issue is, how long does it take or how long should it take for a person to get the issue resolved? Should it take a day? Should it take a couple days? Or better yet, 
when the bank finally gets the right information, right? When they finally get the right information, because it doesn't take banks a long time to open up a new account. They quick to do that. It doesn't take a bank a long time to go ahead and process a credit card application because they quick to do that. But let's be totally honest here. How long does it take a bank to resolve an issue? Because when I go to the bank and I try my best not to go to the branch, I really try to just do everything online if I can. But if it doesn't take a long time, because when I go to a bank and I'm not saying that people aren't doing anything, because I'm sure that bank employees obviously have a lot of work to do. But when I go to the branch, people be chilling. They're on their phones. They're walking around. They talking uh, like any other workplace. I'm not saying that there's something to be done every minute, but watch where I'm going. How long does it take to get back to a person, resolve an issue? Because let's be totally honest. A lot of these issues can all be avoided. And even if they're not avoided completely, how long does it take to resolve the issue? Management needs to get involved faster. District management should get involved faster. Corporate customer support needs to get involved faster. Otherwise, if they don't get involved faster, we're going to keep seeing things like this. I got a hell of a story for you, but it's not the first time we've been here. According to a lawsuit, 23 year old, Shanquise Jones, a 29 year old, Brian Kraft Jr., are suing. Comerica Bank, after they say branch, the branch in, Ron, in Rochester Hills, Michigan, deny them a chance to cash a $1,000 check. It was a $1,000 settlement check from the insurance company, okay? The check was drawn on a Comerica account. What? Yeah, the check was drawn on their account, but Jones, says the suburban Detroit bank refused to cash uh, her, her settlement check on four different occasions, alleging the bank employees discriminated against her family because they are black. The couple had filed the claim after becoming victims of a vehicle break-in and theft on uh, of personal property in November. That's according to the lawsuit filed on the 16th. Jones said in an interview with WDIV TV, that while she heard of banking while black, she never thought it would happen to her. Quote, I never got racially profiled before. So I walked outside and I was crying. It was embarrassing. Um, and remember, these are young people, all right? So this is this is something that they, they've heard about, they've seen, reported about, but never thought they would actually experience. They have already been victims of a crime. They get the check from the insurance company. They go to the bank that the insurance company banks with and they're told, no, leave. This is not real. Put it a full mask. This is from the local coverage. Uh, per the report, the lawsuit claims Comerica bank employees accused Jones and Kraft of trying to cash a fraudulent check. The couple is suing the bank for racial discrimination in the making of a contract and accuses the bank of violating Michigan's Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act. I'm going to explain that. That actually protects against discriminatory policies and practices based on religion, race, uh, marital status, age, and other characteristics. In the lawsuit, Jones said she first went to the Rochester Hills Bank where she was not a customer. Not a problem, the check is drawn on the bank. This was on November 21st. She went there with the settlement check dated the day before. She intended to cash the check and or open an account to deposit the check into a newly created account. The lawsuit states, Jones, Kraft, and her kids were the only black customers during each of the four visits to the bank that occurred between November and January. They went four times. On the first visit, Jones showed her identification, signed the check, and provided the requested thumbprint and written signatures. Quote, much to her surprise, the Comerica Bank employee without any proper investigation advised Ms. Jones that they refused to cash the check or otherwise honor the check, the lawsuit states. The bank employee told her to contact the insurance company to get the check reissued. A similar scenario played out the three subsequent times Jones attempted to cash the newly issued check from her insurance company. Uh, this is according to the suit. On her second bank visit, she came in with a new check that listed 
the names of her, Kraft, and their six-year-old child. The bank employee, employee on that occasion said they could not cash the check because the child did not have ID according to the suit. And by the way, uh, banks are allowed to negotiate uh, when it's a minor on a parent's account. When things like that happen, they can make a judgment call. I looked at the rule. There's more, but their fourth, their fourth time. All right, this was on January 12th. The couple returned again with a fourth newly issued damn check. Now, insurance company got to be like, what the hell? Four times. Quote, Comerica Bank employees flatly refused to provide any banking services to Ms. Jones, Mr. Kraft. Refused, and they refused to cash a check, refused to otherwise honor the check, and refused to uh, open a bank account for them. The lawsuit claims employees then accused them of committing fraud, and they confiscated the check because there will now be, according to them, a fraud investigation. The couple's lawyer, Mr. Brandon McNeil, told WDIV TV that on January 24th, he tested whether the same issue would have happened with a customer who was not black. He said the white customer went to the exact same branch location with a settlement check for $1,000. And it was drafted on a Comerica bank account with no problems, none. McNeil also told the outlet Comerica Bank has effectively stolen their check and provided them no recourse but to file this lawsuit. You got to think about the irony of this whole thing so far. They jumped through hoops and loops they never should have had to. The damn bank knew. This is their check. If they got a problem with it, they call the insurance company that holds an account with them. McNeil told um, Atlanta Black Star in an email that read in part, quote, my clients did everything in their power to follow Comerica Bank's directions and provided ample proof. The attorney is a sharp one. <clears throat> he provided the contrast necessary for this to be a slam dunk. What is that? You can't prove discrimination if you can't prove discrimination. He proved it. Somebody else who was white was able to do something that people who were not black, who were black, were not able to do. They got you. Good job by the attorney. Um, Dina Dahl, I got to applaud this attorney for getting the evidence in advance because typically you would have to go through a subpoena process to understand practices of the bank. They got it on record already. Naturally, I would assume that the insurance company was involved in that since they cut a check from the insurance company uh, to provide the opportunity. Yes, absolutely. Good job on the attorney's part. I mean, is it so horrible that this happened to the couple and the woman's statement about how she cried afterwards? Yeah. You know, that hit me the most. Just that like dehumanization, that feeling like you are a respectable citizen showing up, you know, working, getting your check, doing the best you can. And then you walk in and you get denied like that. And it's like, that's not okay. And this is why we have laws because people, and this country can't always do the right thing. And I think between just our general discrimination laws and that specific act, you know, unfortunately, they had to get a lawyer, which, you know, right. even as a lawyer, I think it's nobody ever wants to deal with a lawsuit. It's like usually the worst time in anybody's yep. lives. Litigation is horrible. So I'm sorry that they even have to go this far, but I hope they get a really big settlement as they yep. should. That's right. Damn right. And we will follow this story. Like I said, People should not have to go through all of these hoops, all of these customer service protocols, going back and forth with the bank, driving back and forth with the bank, all of these things just to get our money, just to get our money. It shouldn't be like this. Unfortunately, it's not a lot of alternatives. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't know if it's just bigger banks. I don't know if Black-owned banks do things like this. I don't know. I would assume not, only because I haven't seen it, right? And another thing I'm noticing is that, of course, Chase Bank is always in the mix, man. <laughs> and again, that could just be because of their size, large bank, whatever. But it always seems to be not only Chase Bank, but they're the ones that ends up getting the lawsuits. They're the ones that ends up getting in the most trouble. Because again, I don't think that they solve these problems fast enough. Otherwise, these situations could have easily avoided court time. But who knows? Maybe they like all these lawsuits. Maybe they look at it as free press. Watch this. 
It was June 9th of last year when two Aurora officers were called to this Chase Bank on Buckley Road for a trespassing call. I'm the one she called police on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Let's back up. The incident started when Janetta Vaughn walked into the branch that morning to get checks from a teller. You can see her on bank surveillance walking in. Vaughn telling Fox 31 she sat in a chair to unlock her bank card, which she says she keeps locked for security reasons as a former government employee. Then she was approached by the bank manager who asked if she needed anything. I told her, I said, no, I'm unlocking my card, you know, on my phone, and then I'm going to go up and do my business. The complaint states that the manager then stated, you don't need to be rude. She says, well, you're not welcome here. I'm the branch manager and you're not welcome here. And I says, what do you mean? I says, my money is here. I said, my account is here. She says, well, you're not welcome here, and I'm going to call the police. That manager went into the back and dialed 911, claiming trespassing. Attorneys providing us with that call. She told me to go away, that when she was ready, she would come up, and I don't need to be giving her the 411. Very rude. That's when officers arrived. I'm just trying to do my business. Also talking with the branch manager herself. But all she had to do was let me know what she was doing and, and not with the snarky attitude and threatening me with video. Vaughn said she's been a member of Chase Bank since 2019, never made a snarky comment or recorded anyone in the 60-second interaction. It seemed to be like a danger to me. On body cam, officers can be heard telling the manager there's no signs posted stating no recording inside. Vaughn didn't appear appear aggressive and being rude isn't a law enforcement matter. All I could see was myself being handcuffed or dragged out or shot or something. Vaughn overwhelmed with fear, saying she waited for her husband and then left the bank, but is now filing this lawsuit against the manager and J.P. Morgan Chase. This is something that has to stop, um, whether it's at a banking institution or a grocery store, movie theaters, no matter where you are. I have the right to be there. And Vaughn was never charged with trespassing. The complaint also alleges that since September of 2021, four racial discrimination complaints have been made at that same location on Buckley Road. I now, wait a minute. Now, we know that this bank manager, she could have easily, easily have done things way differently. Now, I understand because, of course, I've owned multiple companies before. I've had a team. I've had staff. And sometimes staff or team members they may not do things that obviously you would expect them to do or that you train them to do. This was completely out of line from the manager, right? But here's where you fix the problem. This is where you got to let the person go. You have to show an example that you do not tolerate things like this. Otherwise, if you do absolutely nothing to that person, guess what? It looks like you either support what they did or you support that person. Either way, it's a lose situation. So the question is, as I said earlier, do banks trust black people, right? And so I know it's a tough thing to ask because you're like, well, Calvin, you're only showing us, you know, just black people having issues at banks. Listen, I've shown you all a lot of people having issues at banks. I'm more so saying that it seems to take a little bit longer. And this is just, again, this is my personal opinion. Like, man, this can get resolved a little bit faster. You know, or no, or does it have to happen like this, right? And again, at the end of the day, is it really black people? Is or is it just that banks are just honestly, uh, customer service is just going down, right? Or that banks are simply just saying, "Hey, listen, we're changing our po our policies, our processes, and if this equals this, if this check looks like this, and if this manager does this, we won't do much about it." And, and again, it may not be a racial thing. It could easily be just banks saying, hey, it's not a black thing. We don't care about a lot of these things that's going on right now. Got it. Well, let us know that then, because, again, this is not looking good for any type of you no know, business or any type of bank that says, hey, I want new clients. Now, obviously, we can go to credit unions, but we know I ain't going to say no names. I ain't going to say no names. But we know some credit unions have obviously you know, gotten into some trouble as well, too. So then I, then people say, well, well, what should we do? Honestly, it just looks like we kind of just you know, hope it just doesn't happen, right? We just got to hope it doesn't happen. Or if it does happen to us, how fast will it get resolved? We got to hope that that happens, too. Well, good luck on hoping, right? Because it's like it shouldn't be like that. And, and, that's, the, and that's really the problem at hand is that people, all people, shouldn't be going through these types of issues. But like I said, I'm only seeing a slight increase with just black people.
Now, here's one of the issues that's, that, of course, I think that kind of stemmed from a lot of this. I don't know how it is on everybody else's social media pages, but I remember back in 2020 and 2021 when they had the PPP loans. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? And so it was on everybody's timeline and everybody all of a sudden was becoming a PPP loan expert. They were saying, hey, I'm going to show you what you need to do in order to get the PPP loan, but I need to go ahead and get a cut of that loan. That was on my timeline like crazy, okay? I think that that most definitely sparked and made a huge difference because that's when I remember banks starting to crack down on cash deposits into accounts. A lot of changes started to happen around that time due to so much fraud. Now, that type of fraud, let's be honest, everybody was in that mix, whether you was black, white, Mexican, doesn't matter what your race is, right? But again, <laughs> I think that that played a major role in the start pro in the process of, hey, we need to crack down on either fraud or our processes for looking for fraud. But all I do know is we'll continue to keep our eyes open just in the banking credit industry altogether. All right. So if you like this video, you're most definitely going to love the next one. I'll see you there.